Hi, my name is Stephen Sindoni, and I'll be your host for this new series entitled, He Walked the Americas. Our first story in this new series is entitled, The Legend of the Three Crosses. The story can be found in a book entitled, He Walked the Americas, written by L. Taylor Hansen. The golden sandals of the prophet came to Paracas in Peru, South America. As in the land now called Mexico, when he went toward Tula, his coming was announced by trumpeteers selling the conch shells and drummers talking with the tom-toms. For 300 miles from mountain to mountain, in all four directions, the great news traveled. Also, as in the north, the tribesmen answered. Like a flood of churning waters came the people. Down from every mountain hamlet, up from every larger village, along each stream in their ships of balsa, from every direction came the people. On a hillside facing the Bay of Paracas stood the healer, looking down on the surging thousands. The sun shone bright on his mantle of seed silk as he held his arm aloft, for silence, giving a sign they knew was his peace sign. The people stilled, expectantly waiting. Then from the earth came the terrible rumble which comes from the roar of the fire god, and the earth began to sway and shake beneath them. The people, frightened, clung together, staring wide-eyed at one another, trying to silence their crying children. In their eyes were unspoken questions. Was the fire god who dwells in the lava, the red blood of the earth, Ah Musum Cobb, showing his anger at this lord of wind and water? Why was he roaring, if not in anger? Only the pale one stood there silent, unmoved by all the earth shaking, his arms still raised in benediction. Finally silence came to the people. Fear not, my children. My father who rules the earth and the heavens is not showing his anger. He but shakes the earth to prick my memory. He reminds me that I have a story to tell you. Then the prophet began a strange story, yet he told it so well with such vivid detail that each man felt he had once been a witness, and the silence was so thick one could hear it. He told them of a land across the ocean where all men were like him, bearded. He spoke of their houses, their cattle, their clothes and customs, their ships and temples, their metal-clad armies. Then he spoke of a man who had lived there, who healed the people, who taught them and loved them, and in turn was beloved of the people. Yet this man incurred in the priesthood jealousy and anger which ran like a bad sore, corrupting even those who should have known better. He spoke of the power of a wicked nation who bowed down before many idols. Into a court of this nation the man was dragged by his captors. Even the judge could see no wrong in him. But as his enemies called furiously for his life, the judge was forced at last to condemn the prisoner to be hung upon a cross of dead trees, for such was their strange custom. In prison the man had been lashed and beaten, and when the day arrived for execution, the prisoner had to carry his great cross to a place upon a hilltop, falling down often upon the hot earth, for he was weak from his stay in prison. Some there were who tried to help him, yet there were many who cried out against him with curses that showed their livid hatred, while spit mingled with his bloody bowed head, thus he dragged his cross to a hilltop. To each side and a little behind him, two thieves were fastened to crosses, and then the soldiers made him fast to the big cross by driving knives through his two hands and raising up the dead trees so that he would hang there until death at last had released him. These thieves cried out to him for a benediction. They were of good heart, even though they had done wrong. Compared to those who had tried to spread hatred and from their own self-minded islands were attempting to stamp him with their own evil, which corrupted their souls like a sore overrunning these thieves, were good, and so he blessed them. Then he asked for a drink as the pain hung on him, and at last, as his head fell forward, he asked forgiveness for all who had wronged him. No sooner had this happened than the earth began heaving. The sun was darkened and the people ran screaming. The three figures swung to and fro on their crosses, and a fierce wind swept over the hilltop. Then seeing that he was apparently lifeless, the soldiers brought down the great cross, and a man who had been his friend came forward to claim him. This man was wealthy, being the owner of ships which carried goods to the four directions on both of the oceans. He had bought a tomb for the humble healer, because he believed his peace religion. To this tomb was the man carried, where he was tended with loving care and laid in a casket. A great rock was rolled against the entrance, lest some try to do him further evil. Yet when the woman came there weeping, behold, the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. For a short few days, some said they had seen him, and then... He was seen no more. Thus, my children, does the Almighty protect the man who carries his message, and not even one of the earth's greatest nations in all its might has the power to kill him, while 
he follows the wishes of the Almighty. So too is it with me, and when just now the earth started shaking, it was to remind me of this story which my father had laid upon my heart to tell you so that you may know more about this peace religion. It is said that when he finished speaking, the people could see behind him upon the hillside the shadow of three crosses. After he had gone, the people still seemed to see three crosses, so stonemasons began the work of carving them deeper upon the hillside so that the children of their children would still remember. Today, if you go to the Bay of Paracas and look across at the hillside, you may still see the three crosses. The great cross in the center is 600 feet tall, while the smaller two are at each side of the cross. There is a line which ties each of the smaller crosses to the great cross. These huge carvings are indeed strange crosses. They resemble dead trees with limbs turned upward like arms raised in supplication. Scientists stare at them in utter amazement. Solemnly they admit their antiquity. These works probably date from the age of Jesus. But the meaning? That escapes these men who are learned. They can only shake their heads in wonder. The meaning is beyond their understanding. Did Jesus walk in the Americas as told by a Native American woman in Peru? In part two of this series, I will share another story that may provide more evidence for the life and teachings of Jesus in the Americas. I'd like to thank everyone for watching The Legend of the Three Crosses.